Hi everyone and welcome to our next tutorial. We're going to start by building a very simple computer network. And the simplest one you can have is just the connection between two computers. So we're going to set that up. We're also going to talk about a few things that we typically have to do when we set up networks like giving each device an address just like we have home addresses so that we have our mail delivered to the right place and we have our pizzas delivered to the right place we have addresses so that we can do that and we all have unique addresses and the same thing with devices and computer networks so we are going to start by building a really simple network with two computers we go down to the bottom here we've got network devices we've got end devices if I click on that you can see we've got a number of different end devices and we mean at the end of a network we would have say a PC so we're gonna put one PC here and we're gonna click and we're gonna put another PC over here now these two devices are of the same type when you connect two devices together of the same type we have to use a certain cable we're gonna go click on this symbol here which is for cables and whenever we click on that we're gonna have a number of different cables we can pick from if we have two devices of the same type and we want to connect them together we have to go and use a crossover cable which is this one right here so I'm gonna click on that and I am going to click on the PC that I want to connect to and I've got a number of connections that I can use or a number of different ports we are going to use the fast Ethernet port so the Ethernet port typically you find on the back of a PC so I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna go over to this one here and I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm not going to use RS-232 or USB. I want to use the fast Ethernet port, so I'm going to click on that. Now, when I do that, my next step is I can click on the device. And if I click on the device, I've got a number of different things that I can set. So, for instance, I can go to configuration, I can go to desktop and see what the desktop looks like. I can go to programming. We're going to go to desktop and we're going to pretend that as if we were on this device, how we would set up this device. And what you would do is you would go into the settings through the operating system and in the operating system we can go in to IP configuration and what I'm gonna do is set up an IP address for a device an IP address is a logical address for a device and devices on networks have IP addresses and that is typically set based on the location of where that device is whether it's in a building in Ottawa or in a school in Toronto or Vancouver or wherever it is we need an IP address for that device we can choose a static IP address in other words we want to choose the IP address for that device and we're gonna do that and I the one that I've chosen here is this one here it is made up of four octets in other words this is an 8-bit binary number this is another 8-bit binary number this is one here and this is one here we have four what we call octets an octet is eight we get an 8-bit binary number so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a static IP address for this device and the one we're gonna use is 192.168.0 dot five we're going to talk more about what we maybe want to use for IP addresses but just for now let's assign it that IP address 
subnet mask we're going to talk more about later if you just click on it you're going to see that it gives us a default value and we're going to use that default value for now so that's all I want to do for this device currently we're setting up a IP version 4 IP address we've done that here we have a subnet mask and now we're going to close this here I'm going to go over here and do this for this device here so I'm going to click on this device and I'm going to go to desktop I'm going to pretend that I'm actually typing in this device and going through the operating system I'm going to go into network so I'm going to go to IP configuration and for this one here we are going to set up a IP address different than the one that we did previously we're going to use 192.168.0.7 and I'm going to click on subnet mask and it defaults to this we're going to keep it like that so there I've set up two desktop computers I've connected them together with a crossover cable this is the simplest computer network that I could have how do I know that it's working well one thing that we can do with networks to figure out whether or not devices are connected together is we can do what we call a ping command I can ping another computer and what that does is it sends basically a message to another device and if I get a message back from that device successfully then I know that those two devices are connected together so that is called a ping and we're gonna do that so I'm gonna click on this device here again so click on this and I'm gonna go to command prompt and in the command prompt I can go in and check to see if these two devices are connected together I can see what the IP address is of this device on the right what I can do is once I open up command prompt I can type in ping space 192.168.0.7 and if I hit enter I'm getting replies from that device and I can see what we call the ping results or the ping statistics I can see that there was information sent in the form of packets four packets were sent four were received zero were lost so I know that those two devices are talking to one another and are connected through the ping command I can go and close this command prompt for this PC and I can go and do the same thing over for this one I can click on command prompt and I can do a ping from this computer to the other one so I can go ping 192.168.0.5 hit enter and I'm getting replies back I had four packets that were sent four that were received and zero that were lost so I'm able to ping in both directions so I know that these two devices are connected together and I can check in real-time mode which I'm in by doing a ping command so that's it for this video tutorial in the next one we'll take a look at how we can use simulation to do this same process and just see how simulation mode works that's it for this tutorial see you next time